Okay, Commissioner, you are alive. Good morning. Thanks everyone for tuning in with us today. I'm Kentucky's Commissioner of Education, Jason Glass, and we're glad that you are here as we have an exciting announcement for you on a new initiative in Kentucky education. Educators are given the incredible and wonderful opportunity and responsibility of helping shape the future of the Commonwealth by serving our children. But we have too few people wanting to become teachers and too many teachers leaving the field shortly after they start. We especially have too few people of color, too few men, and too few individuals from diverse economic backgrounds currently in the teaching profession. And that's important because our students need to see teachers with backgrounds similar to their own. Education has been a great calling in my life, and I'm sure there are many of you out there who have thought about teaching and dedicating your lives to helping shape the next generation. Maybe you didn't know what kind of education you needed or what options uh, there were to change professions or what life would really be like in the classroom. But this announcement today is for people like you. For more on that, we have a lineup of the Commonwealth's top leaders in education and around the state here with us today, including our Governor Andy Bashir. Governor Bashir has made education a top priority of his administration, and he has been a big supporter of our efforts to make Kentucky's education system one of the best in the nation and the world. And I want to now turn things over to the governor to tell us more. Governor Bashir. Thank you, Commissioner Glass. In June of last year, I shared our pledge to address inequity in Kentucky schools. A crucial piece of that plan was a prioritization of diversifying the educator workforce. Today, we have new details, new progress on that effort. In partnership with the Kentucky Department of Education, the Kentucky Board of Education, the Kentucky Education and Workforce Development Cabinet, and the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education, I am pleased to announce the relaunch of the Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching. This initiative will help us recruit, develop, and retain a highly effective, diverse, and culturally competent workforce of teachers and school leaders. This is an urgent goal for the success of every Kentucky student, school district, and community, and I'm committing state funding for this effort. We as a state are committed to the pursuit of equity in our schools, and that includes racial equity. We wanna foster a culture of inclusion where every child knows he or she matters. Through recruitment of new teachers to the profession and the development and retention of those teachers, the Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching will provide all students with equitable access to effective, experienced, and diverse educators that'll help ensure that all our graduates are prepared to be successful members of a global society. The Academy will have three initiatives to inspire, to prepare and to educate our future and current teacher workforce. For more on what this initiative means, I'll turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor and our educator uh, here in Frankfurt, Jacqueline Coleman, who as many of you all know, is a former teacher, coach and uh, administrator herself. Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I am happy to be here today as this is a cause that is close to my heart with the many years that I have spent in the classroom. I believe that every student in the Commonwealth deserves equitable access to world-class educators who have unique experiences and perspectives and are committed to their success. Kentucky education leaders have a shared responsibility to deliver high quality education to every student. And that is why I am happy to announce today with the governor's relaunch of the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching, a $1 million investment by the uh, Education and Workforce Development Cabinet uh, to jumpstart the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching. Scroll down a little bit, Jim. There you go. Uh, the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching will help develop a public education workforce in our state that better reflects our student population. It allows children like mine to learn from leaders that don't look like them, leaders who will provide perspective and shape their lives while also giving an opportunity to our minority students to see people who resemble themselves in these roles. It's hard to overstate how profound an impact it can have on a student to see someone who looks like them at the front of their classroom, whether that's because of their gender, race, ethnicity, or background. 
Research resoundingly tells us that children who sit in classrooms led by people who look like them are more successful. By showing students what is possible, we will create the next generation of leaders in our communities and our schools. If I can say a word to our young people now, here's my advice. If you really want to change the world, become a teacher. When you are a teacher, you have the ability to shape dozens of minds year after year after year. If I asked you to list people in your lives who helped you become who you are, I bet you would at, le at least list one teacher. So to those world changers that are currently in our classrooms, I promise you will never regret your decision to become an educator. In closing, I shared my support for the development and implementation of a much needed implicit bias training for our faculty and school staff across our communities in a June meeting at the Kentucky Board of Education. So I'm excited that this vision will be fulfilled through this relaunch of the Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching. To tell us more about why a diverse educator workforce is important, I will now hand the program over to Dr. Thomas Woods Tucker, who is Deputy Commissioner of Education and the Kentucky Department of Education's first Chief Equity Officer. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Coleman. Good morning, everyone. As Deputy Commissioner and Chief Equity Officer for the Kentucky Department of Education, I can tell you a diverse educator workforce is of critical importance. During the 2019-20 school year, about 25% of students, one in four students, identified as race other than white, while only 5% of our teachers identified as non-white. Almost 61% of our student population last year was considered economically disadvantaged, which means that they received free or reduced price breakfast or lunches. While we don't have numbers about how many of our teachers come from disadvantaged backgrounds, it is pretty much safe to say that it is nowhere close to 61%. It is important for our students to see people who look like them at the front of a class. Whether we're talking about race, ethnicity, economic background, disability, or gender. That's because when students see a teacher who looks like them, or shares their background, they tend to do better in the classroom. Teacher-student matching, which is when the race or ethnicity or other characteristic of teachers are similar to their students, can lead to increased student achievement, lower dropout rates, and other positive outcomes. These include lower discipline referrals and increased aspirations for post-secondary attainment. All students, black, white, or any other ethnicity, benefit socially when they have role models from a diverse array of backgrounds, making them better local and global citizens. We have some good news on the front that I would like to share. We are inspired by recent enrollment numbers in Kentucky's teaching and learning pathway as the students who participate are more diverse group than the current general population as a whole. In the 2019-20 school year, 28% of the student participants were non-white, while in the general student population, that was just under 25%. I'll now turn it over to Kentucky Board of Education Vice Chair Sharon Porter Robinson to talk about the retention of minority teachers. Board Member Dr. Sharon Porter Robinson. Well, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Woods Tucker. Not only must we prioritize the recruitment of more diverse teachers in the profession. We also need to concentrate on the development of positive school communities that support their retention. Data show that over the past two and a half decades, minority teachers were more likely to depart from their schools the non-minority teachers. This is especially true for minority male teachers. The result has been that numerically, we have a very high degree of job transition among minority teachers each and every year. This initiative that we are announcing today will prioritize high quality induction programs support for new teachers and opportunities for professional growth 
and leadership to help reduce teacher attrition. Did you know that more than 60% of America's teachers work within 20 miles of where they attended high schools? Think about what that means. The students in our school, in our communities today, will likely provide most of our future teaching workforce. There are no better recruiters for the profession than current educators themselves. That is why our students need to see their teachers being fulfilled and affirmed in the work they do every day. Now I'm going to turn it over to Kentucky Board of Education Chair Lou Young, who will talk more about how this initiative will help recruit those students while they're still in our communities. Good morning and thank you so much, Dr. Robinson. As you know, part of the Kentucky Board of Education's mission is to ensure every student has equitable access to high quality learning. And our vision is to ensure every student is a productive, engaged citizen who is prepared for school, work, and life. That preparation is built on a solid educational foundation with quality teachers who serve as good role models. Two of the Board of Education's five goals for the 2021 school year relate to diversifying the educator workforce and promoting equity and anti-racism. The new Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching will help us achieve both of these goals to one, advance policies that increase these qualities and competencies of a more diverse educator workforce, and two, promote anti-racism, justice, and equity as documented in our resolution last summer affirming our board's commitment to racial equity in Kentucky's public schools. Part of the relaunch of the Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching is, we'll do this by further developing and expanding Kentucky's teaching and learning pathway in our high schools. This teaching and learning pathway is designed to introduce high school students to the field of education, and lay a foundation allowing those students to transition into post-secondary studies. This comprehensive school program will be paired with local chapters of Educators Rising, a career and technical student organization that gives students a solid grounding in career preparation in the field of education. Students who receive formalized training in the classroom while participating in Educators Rising develop leader skills, leadership skills and positive personal attributes. They also learn to apply their skills in the real world. For more on what will happen when these recruits enter post-secondary education, I will turn it back over to Commissioner Glass. Thank you, Chair Young. Educational leaders must be the first to embrace diversity and to ensure equity, as we have the great responsibility of shake, shaping the future of all Kentucky's kids. As Governor Bashir noted, the Academy will have three initiatives to inspire, to prepare, and educate our future and current teacher workforce. The first of these initiatives is to inspire, and the Academy will do this through a Grow Your Own Educator Grant Program. This competitive grant program will provide funds to establish partnerships between school districts and post-secondary institutions for a pipeline of promising educators, and KDE will be leading the Grow Your Own Educator Program. To talk about the next two initiatives uh, of the Kentucky Academy for Equity in Teaching, I'll turn it over to uh, my, my great partner, Dr. Aaron Thompson, president of the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education. Dr. Thompson. Thank you, Commissioner Glass, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor and Governor, for not only putting your policy where your mouth is, but putting the money where your mouth is. It's important that we understand, and I say this from a very personal and professional viewpoint, as someone who uh, since integration did not have a teacher of color. And as a lifelong educator in Kentucky who happens to be a person of color, I am more than dedicated to this process. And this is an exciting time for us to announce this initiative. So at the higher education level, we are dedicated to ensuring equity 
and tackling racism through the support of an inclusionary teacher preparation set of programs. These programs that put highly qualified teachers of color in front of students is essential. And to do that, we have to remove barriers to recruitment. We have to create opportunities for a successful set of completion standards and processes for educator preparation programs. So I want to talk about the next two initiatives of the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching, as Commissioner Glass has told you about the first. The second initiative is to prepare. And this approach is actually two pronged. First, the Academy will offer mentoring and assessment coaching for participating students. These students will receive individualized support in developing a study plan and strategies for successful admission to an educator preparation program. Now, they also will receive reimbursement for assessment related expenses, and this is crucial for many of our students. The program will also provide them with personal guidance throughout their high school and college careers, and more than that, even beyond when they become a professional. Secondarily, it develops a system of supports for recruiting and supporting prospective teacher candidates, as well as expand programs that support high quality alternative pathways to certification. It's what I call the squeeze approach, and we have to approach it this way. The third initiative is to educate. This will also be a two pronged approach. First, you will we will develop a research based series of cultural competency and equity model modules, and this is crucial to the ongoing process of becoming a teacher centered culturally competent system. These modules will include unconscious bias training and will be available to all Kentucky public educators. Second, the Academy will host focus groups. Now, as we gather our process through a formative way of thinking about continuous improvement, that's crucial. So in conclusion, I just want to tell you we're dedicated to building a strong and diverse educator workforce that will benefit learning for all of our students. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. So I'll turn it back over to Commissioner Glass. Thank you, Dr. Thompson, and thanks to all the lead leaders here with us today. And thanks to the rest of you who are watching as we take these steps toward making Kentucky's education system more equitable and representative of all of our students. As educators, we must model for our students what we hope to instill in them. Aside from a strong academic foundation, we want all our children in the Commonwealth to learn the value of the unique contributions each resident makes in strengthening our communities. As Governor Bashir challenged all Kentuckians last June, we have the opportunity to create a better and a more inclusive Kentucky. And we look forward to the positive impact the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching will have on our students, educators, and the Commonwealth at large. We'll have more information on the Academy and its initiatives as we move forward. Be sure to check KDE's website and the Academy's webpage often for more information. With, with that, we've reached the end of our program, and now we have some time for questions for, from the media. Be sure and type those in the Q&A box, and KDE Chief Communications Officer Extraordinaire, Tony Kahn's Tapman will be available to moderate for us. Tony, do we have any questions? I do not see any right now. I just made another announcement uh, to those uh, watching, so we'll give it just about a minute or so. Um, if we do not get any questions into the Q&A, I will be sure to get those answered. Uh, I will put my email address, which is, will be also at the top of the media release that we will be sending out here momentarily uh, and make sure that we get all of your questions answered. Okay, Tony, it looks like we don't have any questions uh, from folks attending today. Um, I want to thank everyone for being with us, including the uh, education leaders and the other state leaders who were able to join us today. We appreciate the media um, uh, covering this as well, and also appreciate everyone uh, watching in from across the state. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. I have one question oh, here. Let's, let's have it. <laughs> 
All right. Um, it's going to see, it looks like um, there's going to be wondering if the relaunch rollout of the program is going to be affected um, by COVID-19 pandemic at all. Uh, we don't believe so. We're nearing the end of this uh, this pandemic. Things are improving. Our positivity uh, rates are dropping. And while we still have lots of challenges ahead, uh, the the um, th we're at the the seeing light at the end of the tunnel in terms of emerging from COVID. There's so much of this that was already uh, in place. The architecture for it and work that was that was in place already. Uh, we have the commitment from the governor's office for the missing part, which was really the funding to make it happen. Um, and now we can move forward um, uh, by sharing this information, laying laying in place uh, the programs that, that will be um, will be standing up later this spring into the summer and into next year. So I don't think COVID is going to slow this down at all. Okay. I do know there's about a 10 second or 10 to 15 second de uh, delay um, on the question. So I think I do see another question coming in here just about when uh, school districts uh, will receive information about the competitive grant process to begin implementation in their own schools. We'll be providing information through the department's regular communication channels on next steps. So we reach out several times a week uh, with information for our uh, school districts um, and, and we'll include information about um, uh, the Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching as part of that. Uh, I don't know if we have someone on who has the details around uh, when that uh, specifically will roll out, but we will use those regular communication channels as the vehicle by which we disseminate it. Given a chance there, I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Akers is on. If not, we can We'll make sure to provide that information and I'm not sure who asked that question, um, but we can if you want to reach out to me and we can um, provide further information on that. Uh, the next question is, is what does this uh, mean for our historically black colleges and universities? Um, either Dr. Thompson or um, Dr. Porter Robinson, if you are able to help us on that one. Sure, I'll jump in, let anyone else that want to jump in. Uh, it, it's crucial for us to understand, it kind of goes back to the question that was asked earlier about COVID. We've been working to put some things in place already, and we started with our HBCUs. I mean, if you know how many of our students of color, professionals of color that comes from our HBCUs, then this obviously is a natural place to start. So we're working with both at Kentucky State University and Simmons Colleges, at Simmons College, along with our other colleges and universities in partnership to actually increase the likelihood that we'll get more people in the pipeline. Now, that doesn't mean we won't be working with our other universities too. We already started. So this is about a global approach, but one specifically targeting uh, our HBCUs as we develop our overall plans to have this success. And it looks like uh, Dr. Woods Tucker has a few points to make on this as well. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Glass, and certainly thank uh, the person who has submitted that question and other questions. So I am just chomping at the bit to talk about this because I am a proud graduate of a historically black college, Philando Smith College in Little Rock, Arkansas. In our historically black colleges and universities traditionally have served as a major pipeline to help diversify school districts across the country, not only in the South, but across uh, all parts of the country. Albeit we are seeing fewer numbers of African American and uh, other students of color going into or majoring in education, our historically black colleges and universities still remain a very, very viable pipeline uh, to help uh, diversify the teacher uh, workforce. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Robinson is, is going to talk about our partnership and her continued uh, work for us to partner more closely with the states, with the Commonwealth's historically black colleges. Uh, Dr. Robinson. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, contribute to this conversation and perhaps awareness of the strategic significance 
of the HBCUs into our uh, not just education culture, but to the basic economy of our communities. I mean, the research shows that in 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 states and in cities where there where HBCUs exist and are viable, uh, the actual economic development within those communities is greatly enhanced. In this instance, we are also going to leverage to a far greater extent the power of our two HBCUs in the state to contribute to the solution of a persistent um, problem of underrepresentation of minority teachers and, uh, and minority educators in the overall education workforce. So we see our HBCUs as um, a significant strategic asset in our efforts to improve the educational outcomes for all of our, all the students in the Commonwealth. And I would like to make one more plug for uh, the Kate program and encouraging all students, especially our students of color to participate in this program. It's gonna be like no other, in fact, it's like no other program in the country. When you look at the eight, to nine different aspects of Kate. And one of the things I'm particularly excited about, as you heard Dr. Thompson mentioned earlier, you have that mentor coaching part, but you also have uh, the assessment coaching as well. It's one thing to matriculate through the program. It's another thing to graduate through the program. And I really believe that this Kate program is a huge game changer and certainly want to thank our state leaders, our governor and lieutenant governor and our lawmakers in supporting this. All right, our next question that we have is, uh, will, will higher education be eligible for funding as a part of this to extend their education programs through high school classes on campus? Well, the most uh, direct way uh, higher education partners can participate is through those Grow Your Own Educator uh, grants that uh, the Kentucky Department of Education is making available. Those are, again, competitive grant programs that will establish funds for partnerships between school districts and uh, institutions of higher education for that pipeline of, of promising educators. So that's, that's the most direct way that uh, our teacher preparation programs will be able to work with local school districts on get ex extending those uh, uh, programs into local districts. And Commissioner Glass, March 5th is our target date to get that RFP out between uh, higher ed institutions, uh, colleges uh, uh, of ed programs, uh, departments of ed programs, the universities and colleges, and high schools to create uh, grow your to create the Grow Your On program. And really excited about the diversity we're going to see in the different Grow Your Own programs. And, and allow me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Thompson. Allow me to also add that um, this uh, Kentucky Academy for Equity and Teaching mirrors our commitment as a team. Uh, Dr. Glass and and Dr. Thompson and um, CPE, KDE, the Board of Education, to the Commonwealth Education Continuum. Uh, we all know that you don't wake up one day and become an educator. It's not, um, and it it doesn't happen in a vacuum in college. Um, this is why we continue to talk about pathways and pipelines, and and we have committed to make this real investment in our young people, uh, and to make sure that these mentorships and these uh, these coaches coaching uh, opportunities and relationships are built from an early age to see them through to the uh, profession, but also to retain uh, folks and to continue to make sure that um, our education uh, profession is supported and so that we can continue to keep as many of our great educators in the classroom with our kids as possible. So Dr. Thompson. Uh, you actually did a pretty good job of taking a piece of that. I was going to talk about the continuum, uh, but the other part I will add is that we have dual credit and we're being very purposeful in aligning our curricular processes in dual credit with our uh, KCTCS, who has a two year educator uh, starter program, if you want to call it, as well as their four year institutions. And we, we plan on working with everything that Dr. Woods Tucker, the commissioner and the lieutenant governor has mentioned as what I call a holistic approach to this. So it's not just about funding. 
It's about purpose. It's about curricular alignment. It is about actually putting forth what I consider to be a strategic overall plan to make it happen. And this is a part of our continuum. Okay, there was a um, going back over here to the questions, I did have a question about the total amount of funding, uh, the total amount of funding that has been allotted that came in via email. Um, and so the total amount that has been allotted for Kate for this year is $1 million. Um, that includes $875,000 for grants, $100,000 for assessment reimbursements, and mentoring and 25,000 for cultural competency and equity modules. And that is also included in the uh, press release, should be included in the press release. If not, I can get those numbers to you again and I'll put those in the announcement for you. Tony, I just wanted to, uh, to again take the opportunity to extend our uh, gratitude and thanks to Governor Bashir and Lieutenant Governor Coleman for making these uh, these funds available. Uh, they, they rearranged and sacrificed um, uh, work that they were doing uh, because they prioritized this this program and we appreciate that. So that is the source of those funds and we appreciate them. OK. We have a couple more questions. I'm getting through those right now. Um, there's going to there's a question about how the grant uh, program will be structured to ensure that smaller rural districts are able to compete for the funding with larger urban districts uh, with huge demands for minority teachers? Well, one of the aspects of uh, equity that we have to take into account is the uh, urban rural uh, differences that are in place across the state, uh, geographic differences across the state uh, from uh, Paducah to Pikeville. Um, as is often said, we want to make sure that the awardees of these grants are representative of all of our Kentucky communities. So uh, one of the factors that we'll be looking at is geographic representation. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, let me see here. Um, going on here to go through some of these questions. Um, uh, students have expressed reluctance to enter the teaching profession based on concerns around income potential. Does the Kate initiative include any strategies to address this quote student voice feedback? at the secondary and or post-secondary levels. Uh, I'll take this. I'll take this one. Um, we uh, one of the uh, commitments that um, our board has made um, certainly is to elevate our teacher voice uh, by having a an, ac an active teacher ex officio on the Board of Education for the first time and also student voice. We've added a an active student uh, from uh, Kentucky schools to our Board of Education to elevate student voice as well. And so we have made a commitment uh, to hear from the folks that these policies directly impact. And so we're committed to continue to work to improve uh, the education profession. Of course, if it was up to this group that's on this call, uh, we would we would do it we would have done it yesterday, uh, but this takes a this takes a village and it takes an entire group of folks who are going to have to come together um, and acknowledge that the future of Kentucky's economy is in our classrooms today and to make sure that we fund and invest in public education as if that were the truth. Um, and so uh, we've got a lot of work to do uh, and, and it's not just in Kentucky, it's across the country, uh, but we have got to make sure that we hold up the profession of education uh, and, and we make sure that we are recruiting the best and brightest to join this profession and stay with it because our kids, our families, our futures completely depend are completely dependent on that. And you won't find a more committed group of people to that than the folks that you have in this meeting right here. Yes, yeah, I, I think that's a great way of saying it, Lieutenant Governor. I will just add one other item. On my listening tour, I found out when I talked about uh, people going in education and it was really, as you may have this question alluded to that it's, uh, you know, people didn't know. I started talking about the benefits of being a teacher, not just monetarily, but some other things. It was surprising how many people in those audiences that says, well, now I think I want to be a teacher. Part of this has to be good communication and it has to come from people 
that actually can represent it well, as the Lieutenant Governor just said. So a part of what we are dedicated to with this and the continuum is to communicate better, more transparent and louder. So that's important. Thank you both. And I'll just add that when it comes to how these funds flow out to communities uh, in school districts and um, our higher education partners across the state, one of the elements that we'll be looking at and evaluating where these grant opportunities go is, is there a plan for um, uh, sustainability uh, beyond the initial grant. So can we really build capacity and create something that's lasting uh, in communities? And we'll be looking at uh, needs. Uh, can communities demonstrate that they have a significant need? So we're going to we're thinking about how we can target funds to where the greatest needs are in the state and also how we can create something that's lasting beyond just the grant money. So I would like to also add um, a point here. Um, the, the, um, I mentioned recruitment uh, and that today's teachers represent some of our most effective recruiters into teaching. And I just want to emphasize that they also can be uh, very effective in communicating why you don't want to teach just by the way they are treated and the success with which they are supported in providing their best efforts for the students that they are responsible for instructing. So this effort, if a local district and a local uh, university uh, intend to partner, need to recognize that an aspect of this work is making sure that teachers are supported in providing their best practice so that what students experience is a very smart, efficacious, fulfilled teacher in getting the job done on behalf of advancing their educational goals, aspirations, and their own success. So, we want to support our teachers who are part of this effort by making sure they're supported in, being, in bringing best practice as a reality for the students with whom they are engaged. And, and, and Tony, I want to go back um, to uh, the importance of the statement that the Lieutenant Governor made regarding voice. As an aspect of voice, I look at Kate as a multi-pronged initiative to help diversify the workforce. And one of those uh, initiatives, uh, one of those prongs in the, the initiative is the importance of voice. Uh, student participants and staff who participate in it will have focus groups to talk about their experiences, about what's going great uh, as they uh, prepare to become professional educators. And what have, and what have been some of the challenges and how we can make those things work? So, as one of the prongs in this initiative, voice is huge. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, we don't have any other questions that have been submitted uh, through the live event. So I will let uh, Dr. Glass close us out. Uh, we appreciate uh, those of you who have joined us. Looks like we had about 125 uh, join us for the live event. So we appreciate our media partners for sharing this uh, great news about this initiative and the relaunch. Um, again, if you have any other questions, I put a link to our press release in the chat. Uh, please let me know. Dr. Glass. Thanks for moderating, uh, Tony. One final point of, of information that I'd just like to add is uh, Kentucky was the recipient of a, an infusion of federal dollars to help offset some of the disruption that our schools and educators and communities have experienced in the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, some of those dollars we're going to be able uh, to use uh, to support new in, new teacher induction programs. So uh, we know that one of the things that's been uh, disrupted was that first year of teaching uh, that many, uh, many educators across the state had this year. I mean, imagine starting your teaching career under the circumstances that our schools operated in, in um, uh, over the, this past year. So we want to make sure that those teachers have an opportunity to have an induction uh, and su a supportive experience in that first year. So we have some dollars available 
available uh, for that as well. So uh, thanks everybody for taking part in this. Thanks to all the presenters, education leaders, and state leaders who were with us. We're grateful for your time and uh, participation in this. Thanks also to the media that uh, helped us uh, cover this. We are excited about this and think it's uh, a big deal uh, and are optimistic about how this will grow and change uh, the face of, of teaching in Kentucky going forward. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much.